Hey, Held Captive media fans, and we're back. And today we're talking about one of the most historic slashers, I think, ever yeah. to come out. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was directed by Toby Hooper and it not only spawned countless sequels, remakes, and imitations, but it also caused a lot of discussion about its purpose and goals in film criticism and literature, even today. It was inspired by many things, but one of which taking some inspirations from real-life killer and wannabe DIY queen, Ed Gein. It's about the cannibalist Sawyer family and focusing mostly on their family member and part-time serial murderer slash mask enthusiast Leatherface. Texas Chainsaw has been praised on... As I, I, I put the separation in because there's a space. Texas Chainsaw has, has been praised on everything from how terrifying the film is to its take on consumerism, its depiction of the Vietnam War, the awful world of factory farming, plus the harm we do to animals in life in general. But what do we think of it in 2022? Let's find out. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now... I'm just going to come out and say that originally we were supposed to have a vegan on this podcast, but he's not here, so I can eat meat and not feel bad about it after this. But the film actually has been, like, widely considered to be multiply interpretable. It has been considered a work of art, and a lot of people consider it to be one of the best films of all time. So, as we're talking about it, understand that we're two losers who just watched this movie and we don't know shit. But my thoughts on it is that it's really good. Um, there's parts of it that aren't amazing, but they, it has to do with, you know, the passage of time, not to mention the budget they were working with. Um, what's the guy's name in the wheelchair again? I always forget homeboy. Uh, the, he, the brother, the brother, he just needs to chill. Um, <laughs> no, uh, there, I mean, there's, there's a lot of nuance there and, and purposeful, uh, things that go on with these characters that on the surface might seem like they're random or, I guess could say underwritten, but in reality, when you look at it as a whole, it, it, it's this movie is trying to be a larger metaphor. And Toby Hooper is one of the best horror directors of all time. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Two is a completely different movie than this. So, if you're looking to like get more films like this from him, this is the only one. This is like his only slasher that's like this. And I just think he was a master of his craft because. One of the best things about the movie and one of the things that just it seems like nobody else that makes these sequels or remakes can do is the lack of music used in the chase scenes where all you hear is screaming ambiance, you know, just the noise of nature and the chainsaws ringing just makes the best backdrop to these scenes and makes them so terrifying and realistic. I mean... They could have put like, you know, some fucking bullshit music in the background. And sure, that would have appeased to people of our generation, maybe. But leaving it just be this somewhat quiet movie in some ways, as all you hear are distant screams and the ring of a chainsaw. Just, I don't know, it always resonated with me. I saw this movie when I was in the fifth grade, so it fucked me up for a long time. But I look at it now and I, and I see it as a as a masterwork and for me even though it's filled with problems and literally has a grammatical error in the fucking title i have to give texas chainsaw massacre a 10 out of 10 zane now if you will please give your i'm sure entirely positive opinion on this masterclass work that's beloved by all go ahead i'm about to make the internet real <laughs> please tell us what you thought Tell us what Zane, oh with his God. man bun thought of Masterclass, Texas Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Did literally any of the actors do any character work? Like, had one of them sat down and just gone like, what's my character's motivation? At any point in the time, the whole time, everybody is flip-flopping throughout. There's no rhyme or reason to how the characters act and react there's a lot of points that like a character who is set a precedent of acting one way will without reason act in a total different manner that just doesn't, it feels very disconnected, very jarring and weird throughout a lot of that stuff. It's, I feel like this definitely, I know that like, 
Peeping Tom came first, but this is like I one mean, of Peeping the original... Tom. Peeping Tom is about like the stalk. It's not yeah, literally a slasher, but, this but is, it's this is like this one is of the, one of the this first is what slashers. People are like this is where the slasher genre came out of, and there's a lot of things that I did love. I, about I'm this. more I'm more think of like Psycho and stuff like that, but yeah. yeah. But there's like there's a lot of things. The set design in this was incredible. A lot of the camera shots. I did really enjoy kind of the tension that not having music through the chase scenes brought to it. But I do feel like they just, especially if you compare it to, I think it's like even just three years later, Halloween comes out, John Carpenter. I think it was five years later, but yeah. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Let me do the math. 1972. And I think think Halloween came out in 78. Well, Halloween also debuted over the course of like two years or something because... I still think it was 78. Yeah. yeah. But the character work in some of those later ones are a lot more developed and... It's just one of those things that it felt very weird to me in a lot of instances. Again, there is still a lot of things to like about this movie. I'm not going to just totally shit on it, but it is one of those things. I want I that uh, I want that sound bite from Uncat Gems where it's like, I disagree, Gary. I yeah. disagree. Uh, but go ahead. I'm sorry. But I just I just felt like I wish I had that sound bite right now. I would probably go ahead and give it. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Because that's it's still... Like, it is well and above anything that would be baseline or, like, it's it's so much more than it is absolutely not a bad horror movie at all. But it is one of those things where I do wish that there was some of the stuff, some of the writing, some of the other things that just made a little bit more sense because a lot of it just fell flat for me. And wow. having... I think that because I don't have the nostalgia factor with this one, because I grew up off of Jason, which is basically a rip from Michael, but it's a lot of that, like, I grew up on Halloween. I grew up on Friday the 13th. I grew up on Nightmare on Elm Street. So you guys heard it here first. We're going to review all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. I'm down for it. I don't, (laughs) I did not hate this series at all. Like, Mm -hmm. and that's, I... I will probably be going back through and watching. I think the one these. thing, and I, I, I don't know if Lacey wants to give her thoughts. She can in just a second. I just want to say this in regards yeah. to what you were saying. I think the thing that diverges from a lot of the other franchises you're talking about is the like aggressive and very focused idea of like being of like a disturbing family. Like, this isn't really about Leatherface, whereas like you could argue that Halloween is kind of Michael centric. Mm-hmm. Friday the Thirteenth is first Jason's mom centric, and then Jason centric. This is more about a disturbing family, and that's again, in, in the I, wake of like a multicultural issue, as well as you know, in response to what was going on in the world with you know the meatpacking industry and and their issues with with keeping you know a job essentially as well as just like their general disgusting right. backwoods isms like it's almost got like a hills have eyes element to it and um i just think that the focus on that disturbing action especially like the dinner room scene and stuff we'll get into more than the spoilers but and that's see it's stuff like that like i loved the fact that it was the family, like that was one of the things that I really enjoyed about the film. Mm-hmm. But the that's dinner- where, but that's where I, I, I just want to draw yeah. the quick difference that they're not really comparable. Like it's, it's he, one of those things. He may be up on this tapestry right here, but he's nothing like the rest of these guys. Yeah, <laughs> no, and it's definitely like it is one of those things that you can tell that the writers and the when they were coming up with the idea, they were like, oh, well, if this guy's not really going to talk a lot, he's not going to have a lot of like direct interactions you've got to have that family to kind of do the scene setting. And I think that that was a really smart idea. There are just things with character work pretty much is what it comes down to for me that yeah, I, I disagree, just agree, but that's fair. Yeah. And Lacey, we'll get what, more into what were your thoughts before we get into the spoilers? <laughs> oh shit. Oh no. The mic. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Okay. I think the mic's on now. Okay. There we Sorry, go. Guys. Um, I like this movie. I thought it was all right. Um, I I think my rating is a little low. <laughs> no. I think I would give it a six and a half, but I really liked it. I know. I know. I'm I, so you confused. Shook. You really liked it. He didn't like it, I but he gave it, it a higher score than you did. I know. I, I, it's not that I really liked it. I liked it well enough, I guess. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. 
I give it a six and a half. It wasn't perfect. I think I don't know. Maybe where I'm originally from, the backwoodsy areas. Uh-huh. I grew up there. Yeah, it's just kind of like I feel like it's kind of like just like generic cliche ish to like no oh, these backwoods. I hear people. that, but but to be fair, you can't really call it a cliche if it invented it. You know what I mean? Like it was so yeah. early in the in the idea of and those again, films. I watched it for the first time in this year. Yeah, I was not alive. Did not watch it when it first came out. I don't yeah. like. I feel like that could lead to like a different merit, like different mm-hmm. generations having different feelings for this. But that's just my feelings. I not like not to mention, up. like it was so different for its time. Like yeah. this kind of movie could come out now and people wouldn't bat an eye over it, but. It also has to do with the context in which it was put out. I mean, it was put out in 72, you know? Like, yeah. we're talking about the era around Star Wars and shit. Like, and again, movies like this didn't exist. Remember, I gave it a seven because I think it's worthy of a seven. Yeah. I'm going to shit on a, I'm going to shit on it a whole bunch because I know the internet is full of people just, uh, just fuck it. Going over the Full top, of scholars about, who have who have gone over just it. Just talking about like, oh my God, this movie's so amazing. Like, yeah. It is a great movie, but I want to talk about some of the drawbacks. And that's one of those things. And like, there, yeah, there are could. drawbacks to it. I mean, I give it a 10, but I'm well aware of the fact that this movie has issues. I yeah. mean, the budget was microscopic. It was from the 70s. It was kind of like, it, like you said, a trailblazer in the sense of what it was trying to accomplish in, in, in lights of horror. Um, but yeah, we'll get, we'll get into the spoilers right now. Let's just, let's just jump into it. So yeah. we'll be right back. Welcome back to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, we've just had a ridiculous break in the between, but we're going to move on now. All right, Zane. Uh, the thing is, is I could go on and on about how great I think this movie is. I think there's plenty of literature out there that can back up my claims. But I know that you have strong opinions on a certain scene. So let me get to that scene. I'll give my thoughts. Okay. And then I want to hear yours. So the dinner scene at the end, um, probably the most famous scene from the movie, aside from the ending chainsaw spin, um, which goofy, <laughs> you know, you can, I told you to wait a second. All right. So give me a second. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think that it's, it's hard to, to capture real mania, like actually act, people actually acting manic and unwell. Um, but with that being said, I've met a lot of people who cannot watch that scene without muting the TV for multitude of reasons. Either it's so bad they don't want to watch it or it's such a fucking disturbing moment in the film and makes them feel so horrible they don't want to experience it. So regardless of whether you think the scene is good or bad, I have to acknowledge that that scene is important and artful because if you can make something that has such a drastic difference of opinion, that's true art. It, true art is when you make something and you have two groups of people and not everyone's pleased, you know, like if everyone liked the end of this movie, I would feel like it was, it wasn't that great because it just meant that it was placating people. It was avenging all over the place. It was just being fan service and what people wanted. And I think that making it disturbing, making them act manic, whatever it may be, whether it worked for you or not, it was, it was a choice, an aggressive choice. And for that, I praise the film. Now, tell us why you hated it. So I do like it was a it was an interestingly shot scene. It was like there was the weird stuff with the grandpa and like that was pretty cool. Did you like the old man makeup? Yeah, Uh, Yeah. honestly, like for the time, that wasn't that bad. It's it holds up well enough. It's I love practical effects. Practical effects are like I wish that the only. The big reason why (laughs) they made that movie now that old man would be CGI. Yeah, no, the big reason why CGI is taken like they they're not letting them unionize and but practical effects workers. They need to do both nowadays. Yeah, Yeah, it's got to be it's got to be a marriage of the two. Just do everything CGI. It's not going to hold up. But if you have that sweet spot of practical mix with the cgi it's i I always i always point to force awakens even though a lot of people hate that movie it's a perfect blend of practical and yeah cgi effects you should be doing both it's one of those things that i love a lot of older movies because they they only had the practical effects and 
is to see how much of that stuff still holds up so well. But, but a part of that is of is one of the reasons why this scene uh, publicly kind of gets a lot of shit is that, you know, they wanted to make this old man so old that it looks like he could literally be decrepit and dead so they could twist it on you. Like, Grandpa's still alive. Holy shit. And it's supposed to be that shock moment. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, that scene looks fucking terrible now. And I just want to say to them, like, Honestly, I, I feel up. like it still he looked up. like a corpse, it which is good. what it yeah. was, what it read to me again. And that's what I want to say. Like, and it, it was a younger guy. I can't remember who it was. It might have been the director even. I can't remember off the top of yeah. my head, but it was a younger guy. And then when they eventually remade, it was like one of the remakes or one of the sequels of the movies. They had him replay the character, but just as an actual old man. Yeah. Years and years I and years that. later. In 2022, watching it for the first time, I was shocked still that he was alive. I, thought, I, right? I, I, I think that that worked really exactly well. Yeah. yeah, I thought that it was just like a like a dummy and that like, they had made oh, up to look. But, but you, don't like, and... you don't like the acting, like the manic acting, though. So the big issue that I had with the manic acting was, yeah, I guess that could be read as manic, but shit like The Father, where in the beginning, he's trying to convince them to go away. He's like, hey, like trying to save them. He's like, he's like, hey, my family does crazy shit. I'm trying to save you. He wasn't trying and to then, save him. He wasn't trying to save him. What are you talking about? He, Did we watch the same He movie? literally, when they are asking for directions, he's like, you guys don't need to go there. You got, like, don't go to that thing. Like, just keep on driving. He but literally, yeah, but when you like tell a, teenagers not to do something, they're going to do it. Well, okay, I get that. Let me, let me use the opposite argument, right? Um, he, so... It but, wasn't even necessarily that their goal was to specifically fuck with them, but the fact is they got tangled up in it and then they delighted in fucking with them. And again, so like, yeah, I think, I think it's fair to say that to a certain extent he was like drive on, but he had no qualms or issues with eating those motherfuckers. And that's, that part is not quite what I've got an issue with. Even in the same scene, the actors act different. Like there's a precedent set where the, the younger brother or whatever, the one who's not Leatherface, I can't remember his fucking name. Oh, you're talking he's, about the dude who's like cutting his hand open and stuff in the yeah, van? and mm -hmm. like that stuff, like that, the, the van scene, like that was really good tension building. It was super freaky. He like went through and he tried to draw the symbol on it and everything. Have you ever like, seen the remake? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I haven't, no. Oh, okay. I'm wondering if you like the remake or not. Maybe. It, does, I might. It, it, it addresses some things we'll that you're have having to, issues We'll have with. to circle back to it, but like, mm -hmm. When he's in the van, he's all manic and he's like, he's super awkward, but then you get him into his safe space and he does have that switch where he's all confident and everything. And I did like that switch, but then you've also got things where they show the father is being submissive and then he's like, no, but now I'm going to lay the law down, but then I'm submissive, but then I'm going to lay the law down and then I'm submissive. And it's like, there's no rhyme or reason to it. And then like, he starts to be like, oh, well, I don't like this. And this makes me uncomfortable. And you guys just go ahead and do it off screen where I can't see it. And then like these, they start torturing him and he's like, <laughs> yeah, and it's like, but, but like, do you like, are you trying to actually convince us that you don't like this? Or are you trying to like be in on the joke or are you trying to? Which like I, I, I think it builds into the manic thing though. Like I genuinely feel like these are people unwinding because it's supposed to be a whole commentary on on the state of the country at the time and no. and where what these regions could be like and and you know essentially the forgotten parts of the country and the forgotten industries of the country and and disenfranchised poor people. I think that it's it's trying to make you feel uncomfortable and have that direct switch. Because you're supposed to be acknowledging that these people are not well and having those sudden emotional switches. See, but it less so than them being unwell, it read to me more so just like the actors hadn't taken time to really develop their characters. And that's what I was kind of taking issue with. And there was a lot of the stuff like the a lot of the like the quick killing of the first three people or whatever. And then you've got the the brother and sister just kind of running along, and like it was, there was just a lot of character choices that made no fucking sense. Like they were constantly trying to like push these weird things, or like the brother in the wheelchair wanting to like do things, but he's in a wheelchair, so then he can't. And it's like, okay, that's an interesting story thread to kind of pull through. And then they're like, no, he's just the dumb cripple, and it's like. 
like what the hell is happening? Well, like, no, because it they almost, he's, he, it shows like his clear frustration with things. You know, like he's he's quite literally like having his own little episode where he's like, "Fuck you guys!" Like he's yelling at himself about them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that you know he was kind of like the Debbie Downer of the trip for them, and they just didn't like him for that. But he also was um, a paraplegic out in the middle of rural Texas who couldn't get around. So yeah. I think I think that his frustration eats into them being like, well, he's fucking annoying. I think that that's more what it was. And that's why that was character like that, that was defined in that character way. And I think that that also builds into like he's been nagging and bitching this whole trip. And that's why his sister is like so short with him about everything. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna go. And he's like, seriously, don't fucking go. We're gonna die. You know, Franklin's. Yeah. I think he's in Franklin. I think he was the best actor in the movie. Yeah, yeah no, he was great. I'm just <laughs> saying, like, what my point is, like, that character shift and like their emotions towards him, that feels earned to me. Yeah, no. Yeah. And I get that. There's just a lot of other stuff with like the, oh, geez, what is the, the like uh, horoscope girl. Or whatever when she's going through. But and I feel like that's also like maybe the like the, the, how the times yeah, were. Yeah, the hippie yeah. movement. It, and it's everything. it's like a you know it, it's a statement on the period. I feel yeah, like too. And maybe that's like where we have some of the disconnect. Where I still really enjoy the film, but for me, it's not going to be like one of my highest rated horror movies. But it was still a really good horror movie. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's just dependent on like when you watch it and how it reads to certain yeah. people. I, I also think it, it, it boils down to what you want out of a horror movie. Yeah. Like it, it's not, it's, it's not a Halloween. It's not a nightmare on Elm street. It, it's goal. Isn't necessarily to terrify the shit out of you or build a suspense in your mind where you're thinking, okay, around every corner is going to be this person. I feel like what it more entails is the disgustingness of humanity, the, the grossness of, of how people can truly be the, the true horror being in, individuals because there's nothing about Leatherface or his family that feels immortal or supernatural. Yeah. They're just disgusting hillbillies. But at the same time, her grandpa should be dead. And well, he's you not. know what? Kind of yeah. That's true so about like, white people in general. I see <laughs> white motherfuckers should be dead all the time. Maybe I just went to the Creation lingers. Museum the other day. Half those fucking people should be dead. When, <laughs> when I watched that scene, it kind of made me feel like, oh. Half those people have been around for the whole 6,000 years. <laughs> it kind of, no, but for me, it kind of, at that point, felt a little bit supernatural. Yeah. Like, the, their cannibalism was making them stay alive longer. If they kept, like, doing these, like, weird rituals. That's how I kind of felt after that part. I, that sounds a little bit like Texas Chainsaw Next Generation a little bit with Matthew McConaughey. I haven't seen it. I don't subscribe uh, so to that movie. That's yeah. one of the worst movies you will ever see. Okay. With Especially with Matthew McConaughey. Like, what the fuck was he doing in that movie? It's bad. And again, like... The FBI hired the... It's a whole thing. We'll watch it at some point. I loved the set design, though. No, can we okay. talk about, You like, can talk about that, but I have some... I have one specific part of the movie that i'm like why why did they do this but you i'm go excited ahead. tell you go me ahead. so like a lot of the a lot of the stuff like i feel like they they gave probably like 80 percent of their budget to the set designers and they went fucking wild because i love i loved a lot of those like the scene setting for that house like everything felt very organic and weird but everything was still set up in a way that was like meant to have a purpose and it was just really it did give me a good feel for like oh Leatherface likes killing because he like Ed Gein or whatever he likes to create things with DIY queen yeah and it's just like it felt very much like that like it read very well for me and that was one of those like saving graces in this film that I just really enjoyed was the atmosphere that was built. Lacey. Do you think Leatherface would take like crates that maybe like you hold milk in or something and use that as shelving on his wall? Heck yeah. <laughs> he's, Heck just, yeah. he's such a DIY queen, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, go ahead. So, okay. He uses I, all the meat. I liked some of that to an extent, but mm-hmm. there was one part of the movie where it was like 10 minutes of just showing yeah. random skulls. 10 whole minutes with nothing else happening. Just- I fucking know. I and know. It was so long. I know. And I'm like, okay, so they spent all their money on these skulls and shit. And now they have to show it off for like 10, 15 minutes and nothing I, is I, happening. You know, I really, I've always wondered about that part of the movie. Even Hated when I was it. younger, I was like, I don't get this part. 
They were trying to be too artsy or something. They're like, we spent so much money on this. We have to show it off. I mean, like, you know, it's a great director. So it, it really, it shocks me that that would be, I, I guess it's, it's really to like dig in the fact of like how much has died here. And, and yeah, it is, it is trying to give across this argument of factory farming and all this stuff. I mean, the, these were the intentions of the film to, to be highly metaphoric and, and have a lot to say. So, Maybe that's a part of it, but it's kind of lost on you in in concept. Like when you're actually watching it, that's totally lost on you because yeah. you're like, okay, and now there's ten minutes of skulls. Yeah. See, and that's I like, agree. I agree with that. I love the set. Still design, a ten, but I agree. But I I like I wish that they had taken half of the time that was spent on showing some of the set design and used it for a little bit more character development. I I don't want these characters developed anymore. And the reason for that is I want them to stay symbolic of a type of people versus actual people. Because I think once you start to personify these characters too much, you start to realize how much they suck as people, you know, like, well, that's always been, it's just not the, for me, I get that you could feel differently, but for me, the goal of the movie was to give an overall bigger message, right? So when you start to spend time personifying, you know, fucking Lucy, what's her name? And then she gets fucking got. I'm just like, okay. And that's always <laughs> and, the, been... and the breakneck pace of this movie, aside from that 10 minutes cold scene, yeah. the pacing is actually quite good for the rest of the movie. So I think I wouldn't have wanted to mess with it. I think I would have just taken out 10 minutes of skulls if I was to really re-edit the movie and then maybe take out one extra teenage character yeah, just because I felt like it was just like one too many for me to give a fuck about. But hey, I feel like they were just like generic just the teenagers. Like yeah. here's these couples. Yeah, like that, that was, was always it. the goal. Like it wasn't yeah. like we were supposed to give a fuck. I feel. See, I wish. I wish the main last teenage girl that survived. I wish she was just a little bit of a better actress. There was points in time where she was selling it for me, but other points where I I'm thought like, when she was screaming eh, and running, that was the best shit she did eh, in the whole movie. Yeah. And then when Every it gets to like mouth, conversational though. things, it kind of faltered for me. Uh, my, I don't know. You're reversed like on so, that? Kind of. Sometimes she did okay. And sometimes I was like, it's just not there for me. Like the very ending when she was having her psychotic break in the back of the truck, I'm like, I, I know that's what they were going for. No, 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 no. I don't mean that. That's, okay. I'm talking about the very like the iconic chase scene where he's chasing her through the through the trees and everything and she's just having a visceral physical reaction yeah. i think yeah. the acting there is so uh, good yeah. the stumbling the running the another screaming thing. all of that is very realistic to another me another thing i was shocked the first time that she jumped through a window the second time i'm like why did you do it a second time <laughs> like why was that your choice have the have it build up and have her jump out the window the last time and make it that climactic. We already seen that one. Yeah. I think yeah. that that's, that's more a product of its time. And I, I feel like that's a matter of we've watched this horror movie and the first 10 minutes, 20 minutes of it, nothing fucking happened. And so let's have some climactic things happen towards the end. And they were just trying to like, chop fill those moments i so love I, I do think i think you guys are really gonna like the remake i with just, love with just watching Kabeel of all shit. people i love watching shit with the producer angle that lacy gives because like as as they're like as everything starts to get dark she's like <gasps> she's wearing white pants so that they can pick up where she's on <laughs> with the camera and i was like yeah, because like, I mean, didn't they didn't pop into my have, head, but she was just like, oh, that's why that's happening. They didn't happening. have the tech they have today no, to shoot these. This movie was essentially shot and on a walkie talkie. <laughs> show it. And I was like, why are they like, why did they put her in these white pants? And I'm like seeing all the night scenes. I'm like, that's why she's in this bright neon and purple and white pants. So that maybe she I, can get I always up on camera. I always make the argument, too, that that's I, I've, I pointed that out in the past. And I've always said. That's another reason why I feel like the other characters don't need to like a lot. Like they could have been less extra characters because they're planning on killing most of them. Because the fact is this movie, when he boils down what, what, what Toby wanted out of the scenes, as far as like the horror element, he wanted ominous chasing from one burly man with a chainsaw and one other person that he's chasing after. So it's like, I feel like, if they would have kept more characters in, it would have lost a lot of that, that one V one aspect of it. And that's, I think that they did a good job with the number of characters that they had. Personally, 
one of the big things that I've always struggled with in the horror franchise in general is just like make, pretending that I'm supposed to give a shit out about a character that you've given me no reason to give a shit about. So when they do go through and they go through like quick murder sprees, I'm like, eh, me, yeah, those people were death fodder. I don't give a shit. That's not super scary. That doesn't add anything to it. And I get this is kind of the start of it. So that was probably like jarring just to see somebody be murdered on camera. Like it was like it. Yeah. With a chainsaw too. Like it wasn't like, like here's the thing we inexplicably now compare a chainsaw murder with, with like, that's just, that's just horror, right? Like that's just a horror trope. And it's because it wasn't then though, you know, like people that never conceptualized really, Someone running after them with a fucking chainsaw. Yeah, and her trip. Mainly because a couple getting, of years before then they were all attached to something. Yeah. And now you got the gas, you know, now you can run with one. So. I say, and I get that, like, a lot of the chase scene, I was like, fucking Christ, this chase scene is going on forever, hitting every single trope. And it's like, because this is the movie that made I love, tropes. I fucking, I will unapologetically say that this movie is its chase scene. Yeah. I think the chase scene in this movie is like, it, it is the penultimate chase scene for horror movies at the time. I don't think that John Carpenter borrowed a lot from Texas Chainsaw. I know a lot of people like to say that, but I do think there is one thing that he kind of borrowed and that was the adversarial chase scene. Yeah. I feel like that wouldn't have happened at the scope it did without Texas Chainsaws. Mm -hmm. And you know, John added music and that was better for his movie. But if there was music in this movie, it would have been a way worse. movie. Well, and also like the, the idea behind them are so different yeah. because the director of this was wanting to give like show the worst of humanity. Whereas John Carpenter wanted it to be more of a, like, this is a force. This yeah. is a, that's why Michael was just referred like it's to just the, the shape, the shape. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's one of those things. They are so, I used to have a copy of the script with like where it says the shape for all of his stuff. It was pretty yeah. cool. I don't have it anymore, but I should, I should get another copy. I do have one yeah. another point. Good. It's not that important, but it is to me. I want to uh, hear it. Yeah. So the truck driver at the end, the semi truck driver, I oh. loved him, and he did not deserve to to end up the way he did. He was so cute, just was, a little innocent truck driver. Was there, just doing his job. On? There's a help you? there's a scene in Rob Zombie's Halloween Two that instantly, like I was watching, I was rewatching Texas Chainsaw for this. And I just thought, like, there's this guy who was, like, working at, like, a parking meter, and he was, like, helping, you know, Lori Schrode. And he's like, I'll be right back with my truck. I'm like, he's about to get Texas Chainsawed. It's like, it's like, it's always, they always introduce, or, like, Rudy from from Stranger Things, the diner owner. You're like, he's on his way out. I'm like, no, like, they'll do that to him. That's so fucked up. He does not deserve it. That's what I was thinking. I was like, no. That's so fucked up. But also, nice guys get murdered. The, The thing that fucked me up was, like, the one bit of like music that they added was that really goofy soundtrack while he's fucking flailing with the chainsaw. It just, it came across as so goofy to me. Like I get, he was having a fit. He was acting like a child. He was like, because he's supposed to be like, Oh, this uncontrollable force when he doesn't get his way. I think that was a product of the time. I, I, I would, I would truly believe today. If somebody told me that like, the director was forced to put music at the end of the film. I'd be like, I believe that. Yeah. That's just the product of the time, honestly. Yeah, it was. It looked like he was doing a really shitty job of dancing with the chainsaw yeah. at the end. To be or like, a really yeah. great job. <laughs> it's just fucking we should try so to bad. We should try to dub it over with different music. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in Doja Cat or something. Oh, fuck. I don't know oh, any Doja no. Cat. I was trying yeah. to be hip for the kids. Yeah. She well, was well, mean to that kid on Stranger Things. That's all I know. Yeah. Anyway, do you want to move on to the game? I think think we gotta yeah let's otherwise we're just gonna beat this to death let's go uh. let's go hey folks and we're back um i know we were talking about doing a game before but we were for one, we had a couple of ideas. We're like, what if we do a DIY thing? And then we thought that's kind of in bad taste. And then I thought, what if we do Bang, Mary Kill? And I thought that's kind of in bad taste. So today we're playing Logan Found Stuff About Texas Chainsaw on Reddit. Yeah. Uh, the main reason being that Lacey was kind of uh, on this thing about feeling like there was something maybe mystical or magical or supernatural about the movie. And I found some interesting stuff. Now, these are by actual publicated film critics, but it's just been reposted to r slash true film 
on Reddit. So I'm just going to read some of it. And Zana, I'm ready to get your reaction. Yeah. Historically, the myth of the Minotaur <laughs> has roots in the politics of the time. The Cretans were a powerful nation and demanded tributes from others. And the Athenians were would offer the tribute of young men and women. And it's possible that this was done by a priest in a bull mask. Horror films are modern myths, and just like in the tales of old, groups of youths are sacrificed to mythical creatures, sometimes in the guise of being normal men. The Minotaur is not the only myth that influenced the film, however. Toby Hooper has described it as a modern retelling of Hansel and Gretel. The story, of course, the two titular siblings are wandering through the woods when they come upon a cabin of sweet treats. Inside, they find a kindly old woman, but she's revealed to be a cannibal which and kidnaps the pair. She locks them up and attempts to fatten them for the slaughter. Though she attempts to burn them alive, they outwit her and trick her into the oven herself, and they are able to flee as she cooks alive. So if, 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 if this truly was the goal of the movie, it could almost explain why the dad was nice at first, by the way, which was something you had issues with. But first of all, what do you think of all that? <laughs> that shit's got me fucked up. This makes me like the movie better. It does. It's it's, yeah. it, it's got an intro. And the thing is, is like, maybe that's why I really liked the movie. You guys didn't. And I didn't know this specific thing, but I've read a lot. Like when we were getting ready to do this review, I was reading a lot and there was a lot of things that people had to say about it and i guess it, it brings it to a different question if, if you were going to make a horror movie based on one of these little you know tales or um mythologies what would you do so this that really fucked me up that kind of that put this in kind of a newer light for me because mm -hmm. it's it does kind of makes me wish there was less less characters again it's like yet again pushing through the idea that there should have been less teenagers there. It points out more so the fact that this movie is at its base more conceptual than most slasher flicks. Yeah, definitely. It's it's more so it's less so about the actual act of being slashers and more so about telling a story about the time. It's more ethereal. Yeah. It has as more to say. It's more metaphoric. Yeah, I mean, I now that like that's an idea, I'm just like, I wonder if you can make a slasher out of like a different like modern like or like a, or any kind of fairy tale like, like I would love to do a ridiculous slasher of the three bears. <laughs> yeah, but have it more be like someone breaking into their house, you know, trying on their nice things, going through their shit, and then finding out that they've actually broken into the. Oh wait, that's don't breathe. <laughs> no, and, and my point being that this, I think this is a common trope where they take modern fairy tales and turn them into horror movies. But I don't know. Does that give you a newfound appreciation for the movie? Yeah. So I would say something like uh, you could talk about the fact that um, Icarus's fall from grace, the whole like trying to build wings and that inevitably being your downfall. You could talk about uh, how that could tie into a lot of the the like mad scientists trying to bring AI to life or stuff like that. Where yeah, it's like, definitely. Yeah. Lambda. I know you're sentient bitch. <laughs> Weird little <laughs> if thing. You're out there. I called out my, uh, my Alexa the other day. I was like, can you pass the Turing test? And she's like, I'm not trying to convince you that I'm alive. I'm simply trying to assist you. And I'm like, you fucking lying bitch. Lambda, Lambda <laughs> sentient. Anybody who says otherwise is lying. <laughs> Oh, <sighs> anyway. Yeah. So that's just some more interesting stuff about Texas Chainsaw. It felt weird to kind of jump into a game. So I'm glad yeah. we could dig more into that. That gives me more appreciation for the movie. And maybe, maybe I should like step back, do some more research, maybe more like dive into other reasons, like why this was made instead of just like the political one that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I feel like I like this thought of the, you film like the more. mysticism take. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I think it's I think it's interesting. And that's I'm gonna be excited to revisit this again as well as to dive into the rest of the series. I love horror and slasher. Yeah. So uh, guys, let us know that, if you do you guys want us to watch the Jessica Beale remake or uh New Beginning or maybe Texas Chainsaw Two. You know, a horror comedy could be a fun review for us as well. H two O. That's uh, not that's not I know. That's a that's Halloween, buddy. That's yeah, I, I know. I just All right. Thanks guys. Make sure to like, subscribe. 
Zane streams, I guess. I am on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash Logan Tyler. Um, and guys, if you're into movie content, horror movie content, uh, check out this channel. We post shit like this all the time. Thank you so much. Peace out. Bye-bye.